So today in this video I would like uh, to compare this uh, beautiful antique uh, microscope slide which is uh, over 120 years old with this uh, modern slide here. Both of them show the same specimen, a sunflower, and um, however um, it looks uh, a little bit different under the microscope and we're going to now um, compare those two and I'm going to show you why this antique microscope slide is actually uh, so much better. So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here. A little bit of background information here. Um, this uh, antique microscope slide, uh, if you just look at this here, um, yeah, is um, over 120 years old and I know that because the manufacturer um, of uh, this slide, um, he died back in the year 1906 um, and he was selling slides until approximately the year 1900. So this is a really nice uh, slide with a lot of information on it here as well. Um, it actually tells you over here how it was mounted, how it was stained. So for example, carmine, that is the name of the stain. It's stained red red. It's actually a food coloring um, and it uh, used, uh, you, the, uh, the slide uses the mounting medium um, called balsam and balsam refers to Canada balsam which was very popular at that time. Um, the slide itself also has a beautiful ring here. I think it's not really necessary because Canada balsam, the mounting medium, does not require um, a ring here to stabilize the cover glass. The rings were also added uh, to prevent moisture exchange and to uh, increase the longevity, the longevity of the um, of the slide. I'm not necessary but um, I think uh, the person who made the slide used this also as a, as a branding for branding it in because it looks nice. Okay, This is the Latin name of the sunflower Okay, and LS stem stands for longitudinal section. Yeah, so and we have actually uh, yeah, the same specimen over here. Yeah, it says your sunflower stem LS longitudinal section. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> the slide looks much simpler, um, but there is actually yeah a small difference when you um, compare them under the microscope, and that's uh, what we're going to do now. And this actually also um, that demonstrates a little bit of what you have to be careful when you are uh, making your slide these slides yourself. Um, yeah, so let's have a look. So this here is now the antique uh, slide. Um, yeah, under the microscope, uh, it's uh, the cells are stained red. At least the cell wall are stained red that is because of the carmine and uh, as I uh, scan across the slide we're able to see that well hmm, there seems to be some kind of an alternation uh, between different cell types here um, yeah so over here um, they stain quite a red again let me focus a little bit yeah and then um, yeah again we have regions where there's less color and we've also got regions here where um, yeah the cells seem to be extremely long and thin. Um, I just would like to show this to you now using my arrow over here. Yeah, it's a kind of, uh, you can see it already over here, that over here the cells, uh, they seem to be running in parallel. And those regions here are regions where um, the plant, uh, the, the, the sunflower stem, transports substances up and down, um, uh, up and down the stem. Yeah, and over here you've got again you know, the individual cells uh, more visible. But there is actually one place uh, that I would like to direct your attention to and then I'm going to tell you show you the other slide to show you why this slide here is so much better. Um, if you look carefully over here we're able to see those um, interesting uh, spiral shaped structures here right. Um, they're actually quite common in plant cells. Uh, the name of this is called xylem and uh, these are um, uh, spiral or ring shaped structures actually strengthening structures inside the cell wall. Um, so basically uh, they make the cells stronger because in this xylem water is being transported up the stem and uh, every time when there's water flow the pressure drops and uh, these uh, strengthening uh, spirals, these strengthening rings prevent therefore the cells from, from collapsing and kind of keeps it open. Okay, So um, very common, um, it's uh, um, also quite uh, frequently visible. Some of these structures can be quite long and um, yeah we can actually see it looks um, uh, quite uh, um, quite uh, quite nice I, I would say to be able to see those structures. So you know what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch uh, to the next higher magnification. Yeah he here we go again okay you can see that uh, over here um, it seems to have been cut open okay because uh, when the company or the person who made this um, was actually cutting the plant stem into thin sections. You can actually see that uh, some of those xylem tissues were cut open. Okay, um, but let's remember a little bit of how this uh, this specimen here looks like and I would like now, I would to now like to show you um, the modern microscope slide uh, which was also <laughs> quite a bit cheaper um, and I uh, here again uh, some xylem tissue over here um, and I would like to show you um, of what uh, problem this modern microscope slide has. 
So this is now the modern slide. Um, again, we're able to see xylem over here, right? Um, it's been stained uh, using a different stain. I don't know which one, unfortunately, does not specify the, the stain, but uh, simply because there are some cells are stained blue and others are more reddish, I suppose it was some kind of differential staining that they used, so maybe different stains. But if you just look here um, across the slide, you will already notice that um, in this specimen here, um, yeah, quite frequently there are those gaps. Yeah? And this is because the specimen has uh, torn or has ripped apart during the cutting process. The problem with this slide simply is that, that the cut is way too thin. Okay, And when a cut is too thin, then um, it becomes unstable, like, like over here. And then this um, causes tearing um, of the plant tissue. And that's why we have all of those gaps here. Yeah. Um, if you also look carefully, uh, then you're able to see that uh, the individual cells, uh, they do not um, seem to be very very thick or very pronounced in the sense that many of those cells also were cut open and they lost the cellular contents. So if we just look at those cells here, um, you will actually see that most of the cells here actually uh, appear to be empty. And this is because indeed they are. They have been cut open because the cross-section was so thin that the cellular content was lost. Um, if we are lucky a little bit, um, and we see this over here, sometimes occasionally we are able to see those tiny dots here, and these are the nuclei. Um, and here, luckily, they are still present, but you see that most of the cells don't have that. Now let's compare uh, the contents of the cell again with the antique microscope slide, because again, here we can see a difference. So this is again the antique uh, slide, and uh, yeah, here look, inside many of those cells we are able to see the nuclei uh, again, and that is because the section is uh, significantly thicker. However, here, even here, some of the cells are also larger. Let's move over here. And those cells here, which appear um, to be, which not only appear, but which are actually significantly larger, we can actually see it already from the circumference, we see that um, here, we're not able to see the nuclei because those cells too now have been um, cut open uh, due to the thin sectioning um, of, of the specimen. Yeah, And the cells over here are still remain uh, mostly uh, mostly intact uh, because their their diameter is actually um, also significantly smaller. Yeah, so I just wanted to show this to you um, a little bit that um, yeah the preparation technique can actually have a, quite a bit of an impact uh, um, in the way that the specimen appears. And um, now the question that I have is is, is why is it that uh, the modern microscope slide was actually cut a little bit too thin? I mean, a simple check beneath the microscope would have been enough to uh, determine that um, the specimen is actually damaged or has been damaged during the preparation process and I have a hypothesis. I suppose that they simply didn't check. Huh? Um, uh, they simply um, cut the specimen at a certain defined thickness which might have been fine for other specimens maybe but for this particular one actually it uh, resulted in, in the tearing. No, not this one again, this is the antique one um, but the other one it resulted in this tearing um, of, uh, of the specimen. I'll just show it to you again. Yeah, yeah, over here, for example, all of those gaps that you see in here, okay? Yeah, just wanted to share this uh, with you in any case. Um, yeah, um, hope, uh, hope it was interesting. <laughs> um, and I uh, wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting. As always, see you around next time. Bye-bye.